uh, minus eight Fahrenheit, I think, because it warms up to snow and then it gets cold again. What about uh, we have James Blatch and Michael Anderle on today? Uh, Mark Dawson wasn't able to make it, unfortunately. James, where are you? Go where are you? And what are you doing right now? I'm in the I'm in the motherland, the United Kingdom, and we have had the most glorious week of spring, which is oh, you're kidding me. Truly ironic. It's been gorgeous here. <laughs> you guys, well, Michael was over in London um, in March for our conference, and it was pretty miserable then. Pretty typical kind of march weather but it's being gorgeous and one day I, I, it's a strange thing the isolation is that we live back and on to countryside and i take i walk the dog there all the time and i like i like isolation this is my time okay i don't like people you know you know i don't like humans so i'm out with my dog in the middle of nowhere most of the time except for now when everybody literally the proverbial every man and his dog is out there. I can't go to the wilderness areas without seeing five people ahead of me and behind me. And my dog's not particularly social. She's beautiful and sweet, but uh, is fearful of other dogs and will occasionally go. So I have to keep keep her separated. So it's been stressful. Um, but I actually got up at, I did a Craig this week. I got up at 5.40 on Tuesday and I walked and watched the sunrise over the lakes by the house. It was absolutely gorgeous. It's, um, yeah. And yet we're all stuck inside basically this week, of course. That's that's great to hear, James. Uh, keeping yourself healthy and getting out is is really key. Even though if you're in Chicago and you get out, you can get arrested. What about you, Michael? Uh, still in the the condo in the sky, the cave in the sky in Vegas, where we have approximately five people walk by every hour. Wow, what does <laughs> Vegas look and feel like at the moment? Uh, it feels not quite post-apocalyptic because if you do, if we do go downstairs and go out on the strip then you know you'll see people there's there's a lot of skaters and people with bikes either that i don't know where they're renting the bikes but they're like renting them and you know riding up and down or you have a bunch of skaters who come down here to be able to try to skate on the strip not the street but the really smooth sidewalks and the cops are just i mean it, it's actually a really safe place to come and walk because the cops are every few blocks they're usually in front of every cvs or walgreens here and then they just randomly seem to show up and then all of the casinos have security guards to tell you move along move along there's nothing here for you to see yeah so that obviously the casinos are all shut and all that's yes. open presumably is the essential like the food stores and the pharmacies no no the uh well the, the cbs just closed their pharmacy there's a walgreens across the street there's a walgreens and cbs down maybe a quarter of a mile so we can get to four of them really easily just walking of course okay. we can get out and leave in our car and there's another grocery store just a five minute drive away so it's it's been really unique a few of the restaurants they're still here and open you know for pickup and okay. uh, one of them I, a little bit moment of silent or sadness giordano's is closed the italian restaurant that i was like you know it was a high quality deep dish chicago pizza and i i had uh, like you james my wife was very happy with the fact she's like i have to stay home not a problem and i'm like oh no there's a problem <laughs> yeah. I, I need to get out <laughs> And so I, I uh, did not willingly go into this good night, but I'm mostly here until, you know, oh, I must forage. So we, we were uh, we were talking before we went live, before you came on, Michael, about uh, what we're doing to keep ourselves busy from a business side. What are what are you doing right now for the business? That's interesting because for us, our business has only slightly been hurt. Um, just from the, and I've noticed that it's actually moving days. Like Mondays used to be our biggest day. Now it's not. Sundays tend to be a little bit bigger. And then Tuesdays are good. So they're like, the reading is going down on Mondays, where I presume a bunch of people are now teaching their kids, getting them rolling. And then it goes up again. <laughs> or am I still? I did call um, the other day to see whether or not um, Jesse Ray's Barbecue was, was in business. And they are not. They have to be closed. So they are hoping to open up Monday. And I will then avail myself of that for for but, pickup, for takeout only or something. Yes, yes. Most restaurants that I do are going to be takeout only. But other than that, it's you know I was up at midnight last night talking to Lynn Stigler, making sure the calendar was correct for all of the books. We are um, un, it's usually, but we are actually scheduled out for the next hundred days of releases. And when you look at the mix between what we'd call a regular book and and a large book and then a super large book. So I typically think in my mind in 60,000 book in, or K, uh, word K increments. And next week or next month, I think we are scheduled to have 31 of 60K increments, some books being 180K, some being 120. 
And then the month after that, I think we're at like 35 or 36 60K increments. So we're getting up to 1.7, 1.8 million words minimum, uh, getting close to 2 million that we're releasing a month. And so we're scheduled out about 100 days right now. I talked to I talked to Steve Campbell, the uh, operations uh, uh, guru for LMBPN yesterday, and he said about 50 percent of the, of, uh, the LMBPN titles going forward are in pre-order. So yes. uh, in order to better manage our release uh, timelines, I put uh, with your advice, I put uh, Executioner 9 on pre-order for the third week in May. But I think we can hit the uh, last week in April. So uh, yes. And, and I'm, I'm really confident we can hit that last week in April, and that's what I'm doing. My business right now is is writing the book in my in my 16 hours of dedicated screen time each day now. Uh, I, I, uh, I, I uh, am writing the book about averaging just over 3,000 words a day in writing Executioner 9. Been working with uh, some philanthropy. Uh, folks at 20 Books are stepping up very, very nicely to help uh, those who are severely impacted and haven't quite yet hit uh, making money with their books. So we're uh, doing a little something there. Uh, we had a KU run where everybody with a book in KU who has, and and our folks who have KU challenged for a read read a book a day. So I'm doing that as well, grabbing a book. Unfortunately, the first two I, I picked were romance, and and, and I, I'm still ha I'm still suffering uh, from the the effects of those books, but uh, uh, being home alone, and uh, we're, uh, we're, we're still moving forward. Lots of stuff to do, planning forward, putting promotions up for July, August. Also, I was going to get uh, some ads, and this is on Mark Dawson's advice, start a uh, some ads in Germany and the UK markets as opposed to my normal Amazon.com ads. So select well, those markets and dig it for English, for books in English. Okay. You haven't gone down the translation route yet. Is, is the company generally going down the translation route? Yeah, oh yeah, we're um, we've got twenty plus books. We'll be putting out another twenty five this year minimum. Um, Craig has some books that are in translations through the LMBP and German group. Um, we have, you know, Jens is our, our our guy over there, and we've been in German translating for almost two years now. So um, it was interesting to see, you know, Mark come on, and then all of a sudden we get Mark's ads on our books, and I'm like, you slimy son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not long. <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's. Uh, he was sitting there. I've got ads running in German. I'm I'm well aware you have ads running in German. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what about Spanish? I mean, German's taken off for Mark. It's t you guys are seeing good success there. But Spanish is is must be more commonly spoken in the world than German. We're not seeing success in our first three books yet. We're redoing the first book one more time. Um, and I, I the way I look at it is, it first there's not a and Amazon is not a huge store over in like Mexico or, or anything like that. And not only that, but science fiction, which is the first book and worse, vampire science fiction, you know, they have a very strong history of Roman Catholicism. Yeah. And so there's still a lot of that going in there. And when they first see it's like, you know, Bethany Ann is like, ah, she's a demon or she's a devil. I'm like, no, no, she's a good. How do you explain that yeah. exactly? So the cultural issues. There are some cultural issues. Science fiction, some of the biggest selling books in science fiction are ones that were done 30 or 40 years ago. So they don't ravenously grab it. And so there's just challenges all around with us. They will sit there on the on the Facebook group. This is fantastic. Hey, so-and-so, come check this out. No sales. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's our challenge. Uh, Mark is going into France now too, right? Uh, yes, in a smaller way, I believe, but he's obviously buoyed by his experience with Germany. Um, he wants to see how that's going. I think France will be all right, actually. There are definitely no cultural issues there. We share a lot of literary cultural crossover historically with France. Um, so I think that would be a good market for him. Um, I, I talked to Dan Wood yesterday, and he said, he said France is the emerging market right after yeah. Germany for translations. Yeah, we spoke to Dan as well just <coughs> after conference and he's the same to us so and the pre-order strategy um that is a case of um uh, of trying to even things out rather than seeing a dip now doing what you can to sort of things we're doing in our business and i think amazon's lifted one of the restrictions in terms of the uh the time frame on pre-orders well that's it's uh, last august i believe they went to a full year for pre-orders but just yesterday they put out no change no cancellation uh, penalties uh, right now and during the uh, <clears throat> the crisis, which is a nebulous time frame, 
but they uh, on their uh, KDP information page, they put out a link. Hey, if you need to cancel, here's who you contact to make sure you don't get penalized okay. in the one year jail time. So you can do any of that right now, but you have to follow their procedures. Got to go to that. I put that link on uh, 20 books this morning. Yeah, good. That's good. Um, yeah, everyone's making adjustments. Yeah, well, yeah we, absolutely. We, we use pre-order just to make sure uh, the book publishes when we want to, because we've seen delays. I've seen a delay up to four days. I think uh, uh, Martha Carr has a record of, what, 12 days? A while back. This was last year, but yes, it, we, there was some issue that happened at the time. So it's uh, so with a with a pre-order, but now also keep in mind, uh, for the pre-orders, it's not four days prior. It has to be cleared through Amazon processes by that four days. So it's actually, you got to upload your final version about seven days prior. Yeah. Yeah, that's frustrating. So we talk, I mean, Mark in particular talks in detail about your time frame, your 900 days before, your 100 days afterwards, and all that go, goes to shit in a couple of minutes if suddenly you're waiting two weeks for your book to go live. So yeah, I mean, for that alone, uh, the pre-order strategy is a good one. Yeah, yeah. And also you get your ASIN, so you can, uh, I, I released a book last Monday and I had it on pre-order for 45, 50 days. And so I had all the uh, uh, promotional sites lined up because sometimes you have to have a two month lead time to get those. You can't wait until it publishes and then automatically get in. So it, it, uh, there's a lot of benefits to it. And also it really holds you to a timeline, but you can, you can go later and early up your release if you want. And remind me what happens to when sales are counted with pre-orders. In terms the, uh, of charts and, and you you get your rank, you get your book rank on it when you get a, a pre order sale, but you don't get any money. On the release day, you get all the money from all those sales as they go around the world, and then uh, the rank you don't necessarily get all that book rank then. Yeah. So it's not like hey, I got a thousand book sales immediately. You launch to wherever a thousand sales in a day would go. No, it's kind of a uh, it's kind of a. Uh, 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 weighted and balanced. You do get some, but then if you're in KU, now you get all your KU borrowers to jump in and, and your book rank. So your may, your book rank may not get as high as if you had all those sales on the same day uh, through a normal campaign, but you still benefit in that you get that nice surge of money. I know uh, uh, Mark's last pre-order, I think he had, what, 10,000, 15,000 pre-order. I mean, it makes for a really nice payday. Yeah. And one more naive question on this subject for somebody who doesn't publish his own book at the moment. Um, do your, your KU uh, readers, do they get to pre-order it as well for it to drop onto their device on, on publication day? No, no it, it, the only the pre-order is only for purchase. So yeah, that's, okay. uh, and now the good thing also is if you have Amazon followers and, and uh, previously it was really easy to get Amazon followers, you, you could run giveaways where all they had to do was follow you to then be uh, entered for a giveaway. So I, I did I did tons of those, and I figure I have something like 100,000 followers. Michael has, I believe, more, and, and more of his are organic, just people who followed because they like LMBPN, they like Michael Anderley's stories. So when you do a pre-order, they notify all your followers that, hey, here's a new book, and it's available on pre-order. But then if you've done your pre-order long enough in advance, so you get that one, but then you get a second one on release day. So, and that's where all your followers who uh, are KU, they'll get that notification. You probably send out your newsletter saying, oh, by the way, the book's available now. And then your KU readers. And that's where you'll see, you won't see as many additional sales, but you'll see your book rank as if you had. And that's because all your KU borrowers are now jumping in. Sure. Okay. This is like a, this is like my Q&A. It's like I've got a personal one-on-one -on -one with two of the yeah, gurus. You're, you're too used to asking the questions. Michael, you're sitting yeah. there, you've got something on your mind. No, actually, I thought about it, and I was just thinking, you know, this is interesting. James, who normally interviews, and Craig, who also normally interviews and runs the show, are now just sitting there back and forth, back, 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 back. Interviewing yeah. each other. This is like an yeah. interview off. This is like yeah. a... <laughs> well, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just trying to bring Alfred up to speed before we head into the bat cave. I, I still don't think I'm Alfred. I think I'm a young, I'm the young guy. I'm the young buck. I'm, I'm Robin. But your voice is not correct for Robin. We have no British Robins. Holy smackerel. Batman, <laughs> <laughs> wrong decade for sure. Holy, holy butt grabbings. The uh, this, uh, before we came live, we were uh, we had started our argument on who's uh, who's Robin and who's Alfred uh, between uh, uh, James and I, 
so I've already I've already determined uh, you know I even though even though running jumping and climbing walls climbing walls is definitely right out we're not going to be doing that uh, right. had to do plenty of that in the Marine Corps and we're not climbing any more walls so I, I I'm happy in my first floor uh, hotel room and only two out 51 hours of lockup remaining for me so uh, there and then I can go home and start my real self-isolation <clears throat> yeah but at least yeah. your wife will be in the other room and to answer the question to the individual who asked apparently mark has had to um, do some things at home he was unable to make it with this well i guess he would have done it from home anyway but yeah anyway. well mark yeah mark has young children and in the uk our school's finished and my kids are 16 and 14 and the 16 year olds had all their exams cancelled so you know you spend the five year, first five years of your school life senior school life in the uk is building up to your set of exams when you're 16 and it's a very weird moment for a couple of weeks ago when the government said we're not doing them. And, and also they didn't know what they were going to replace it with at that stage. They've now come up with a kind of your teachers will give you a grade based on what they think sort of the answer. But she was she was she was in shock for a couple of days just thinking, what well, 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 this is weird because you wake up every morning thinking about these exams. I would have been thrilled because I was a terrible school person, but this generation, a, a better generation than us and seem to know straight away that this may be disruptive to them. But he, she looks after herself, the 14 year old, he's getting his stuff via email every day. So he sits there, he sort of claims he's done his entire school day by lunchtime, which I'm not sure about. I need to look further into that. But Mark and Lucy, you know, their children, school is partly looking after the children. It's occupying them. They are not the age where they're going to go off and do stuff on sale. So my heart goes out to everybody uh, who has suddenly um, very young children in the house and having to do all that stuff. It's, uh, it's stressful, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, especially and especially if one of the parents is then in healthcare or in uh, in the uh, uh, supply chain somewhere, and they still have to go to work, and the other one is, hey, I, I have to now. Now I'm a teacher, and homeschooling. I, I hope this uh, helps people get a new appreciation for teachers. My my wife is a professor. My mom was a teacher growing up. Uh, 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 second grade. She taught second grade. So I, I always respected teachers because I was of the age where I got my knuckles wrapped with a ruler if I didn't. So, yeah. Michael, there's a question on the screen. That sounds like an Alfred sort of age. That's a, it's it's not an Alfred sort of age. It's it's. it's... <laughs> I reckon Alfred got his knuckles wrapped when he was a young boy. <laughs> and Ralph, Alfred did the knuckle wrapping. Yeah. <laughs> I saw the question on the Steve and, uh, on the screen, and I had noticed a couple of people in the in the chat channel discussing how someone had been talked to by Amazon and saying if your book is in Prime, your KU reads wouldn't count. Now that's never been my experience, and it could have been something changed. But I can say that Wolfpack Publishing they um, were blessed with many books, and they're having the best time ever. So it doesn't seem to be true that if your book is in Prime, that their KU reads for those who are in KU are being affected. Yeah, I, I've had uh, I've had only one Prime deal where my book was in Prime for three months, and now it did really well. It stayed in top ten sci-fi for the entire three months, and I got a lot of page reads. I got a lot of uh, well, I made I made almost all my money off page reads. I had a BookBub feature deal to include. It was a U.S. and over three month period, the BookBub feature happened right about at the beginning of that three months, and then this other book was in Prime reading during those three months. So during that period. The uh, the earnings were about the same, but I paid for I paid what almost a thousand dollars for the bookbub feature, and some some uh, stacked ads where I paid nothing for the prime reading. So overall, the better value was prime reading for three months rather than the bookbub feature. I mean, it made for a really good summer because they both had a a, a a most excellent ROI. So uh, if you can get a prime reading, I, I don't ever I would never advise anybody don't accept it. Because uh, if you're in KU, I get the I get the page reads. I mean, me personally, it worked out quite well. Yeah, it has as well. And if it's true that they don't count, you know, where a person who is part of KU goes into Prime Reading, um, that's what we're specifically talking about. We know that people who are in Prime that are not in KU, you don't get those, you don't get those pages counted. Are they the and, ones who then get a an, like an advance? Here's five hundred bucks or something like that. They certainly used to. Rumor is that they're not offering that nearly as much anymore. And okay. we would, you know, LMVPN would still encourage taking them up the offer. And it could very well be that the people that are in KU that are taking it through Prime are, in fact, not getting credit, but the higher rank might be driving more sales or the fact that Amazon just does more emails out 
for that purpose. Either way, um, it has been our experience that being in Prime is a good thing. Yeah, that, that's my my lone experience, and I keep uh, keep asking, hey, can I get another one? And and first in series is the way to go with that Prime rating. So for 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 me, because I write in series and sequential books, it's important to read the first book for the, yeah, for the series. Absolutely. So what are you seeing over there? Because the UK, we, we got out of the UK um, right before you guys started really going south over there from it. Uh, and how is it now for you? So they escalated it kind of day by day. And they started off with a over 70s should stay at home. Then it started to be only go out if necessary for everyone else. Then they closed the schools. And a couple of days later, they put us on a lockdown. That was on Monday this week. Uh, and they announced that at 8 30 in the evening and they said and they're not calling it lockdown by the way but they're calling it just tougher tougher somethings uh but they, they announced that, yeah boris johnson promised to announce it at 8 30 and he said it's from now and so we are now in a position where we have we can go out for one of four reasons so you can go out for uh, exercise from home so they don't want you driving out somewhere and exercising you you exercise from home and i have to walk the dog so that's basically my exercise you can go out for essential shopping so they don't want you to go out you know buying clothes or or stuff for the freezer in three months time it's it's eggs and milk and, and stuff um you can look after the vulnerable and you can go to work if it's not possible for you to work at home and it's essential that you do so uh, and they've put that into law backed up by fines um if necessary and there's a you know there's inevitably a bit of confusion about what the work what, what counts as essential and some people are asking those questions because some employers are not as sympathetic and as as community minded as others. So they may be running a business that I wouldn't consider essential, but they're expecting their employees to be there. So those employees <coughs> are in a sort of tough position on that. But a lot of that stuff's being ironed out. The news this morning is that our prime minister has uh, tested positive uh, for COVID-19, uh, along with the health secretary, the guy running uh, the NHS side of things. So um, and I, I do wonder about that as a kind of thing, you know, when we always inevitably all of us thinking about this in terms of plots and character and stuff and, um, and how things unfold and I think in reality as long as they have a mild illness it'll be fine but there is something slightly the whole thing's been a little bit destabilizing for people and the first week I found it found it quite difficult to focus on on work and and and, and really concentrate on stuff just because you're so distracted by these momentous events and I think the same when that broke this morning uh, you know, Johnson, our prime minister, did a very sort of warm, friendly, this is fine, I'm still in charge, I'm going to isolate here in Downing Street, but um, I'm in charge. And you can <coughs> see why there's just that wobble now, You're thinking if the leadership are being affected by this. And um, yeah, so it's uh, we're sort of processing that news now. So one of the things that, um, you know, we, we went through it a little bit earlier, Vegas shut down early, MGM, everybody shut down early. So we saw the run on the grocery stores. And now when I go out, there's fruit everywhere. Um, you can get paper towels without too much if issue. Tissue papers is there, but just not very many. But now let's get back to what's really important. When are you going to finish your book? When are you going to put it out? Come on, man. We've been waiting how he many years? He owes us stakes. He owes us stakes. We bet on this. I think we got. I got to twenty four minutes before you asked the question. <laughs> hey, I was being nice, man. I figured we're, you know we're thinking not, about it the whole time. Now we were. <laughs> yeah. So I think I said to you that I uh, by, the by Vegas. Yeah, that was uh, last by Vegas. I didn't say which Vegas, though, did I? You did 2019. We were we nailed you down this <laughs> Vegas, or I'll get you a steak. So I guess you're already planning to buy a steaks. Yeah. We're going to go over here to cut, which should be open. Three of us should cost about nine hundred bucks. Yeah, great. I better leave. <laughs> not, <laughs> not, not my issue. Book. Not my um, issue. <laughs> I could have released it before Christmas, but I I had a wobble on it, and I kind of knew that it could be better than it, it, it is, and that and that the middle section of it needs some work. And somebody pointed pointed this out to me. I had a, a lot of you know good feedback, and then one person said, it, you know, it's not ready. Um, you need to rewrite it. I could have ignored him, and I don't think anyone, I think the people who read it would have said, I don't know exactly what they would have said, to be honest. That's one of the big unknowns, which is a slightly fearful factor for me, but I think I would have got away with it, but wouldn't have been as good as it could be. So I thought, well, I need to do some work on it. And at that stage, I just didn't have the heart or energy because I put so much effort into it in 2019, getting mm -hmm. it to that point. And I just parked it. And at that point, conference organization 
just went up like this and occupied every spare moment, as well as all the other stuff I do. I told you it would. I told yeah, you, you that. Did. <laughs> and that was a really good chat we had early on, Craig, because you forewarned me about a lot of lot of different things. And um, I think we were on top of everything in the end, but I didn't. It still surprised me that two there were there were weeks where two to three hours every day was just organising the conference. Um, anyway, that that I thought when that's gone. I go back and I started the process. What I've decided to do is to go through it on Scrivener, put it back into Scrivener um, from Word, to, to write down a single sentence or max two sentence summary of every single chapter, and then just work on that and look at that and think, well, these are the big areas I can take out. So a kind of, a kind of big overview revision, not the kind of more um, um, macro, no, macro is big, isn't it? Micro revision I was doing before. I've gone, gone out big. Um, which I think will be significantly um, will, will bring me significantly to the point of I can get it out. I think. So are That's you going to are you going to have to use a pen name so that everybody in self publishing formula doesn't go there and buy it? And you have nothing but authors as your also bots or your books. I'm. I'd love to do a pen name. Just put it out there. So because I'm. I people have always said to me, how do you cope with that? You know, every, everyone expecting this one book and. Um, and I've always brushed it off thinking I don't really care. But the truth is, as I came close to publishing it, that did become a bit of a monkey on my back. And I do feel that a little bit now. So I feel nervous about releasing it. So I didn't think I was, but I am actually nervous about releasing it. Uh, so, I'm um, nervous. <laughs> so maybe a pen name would be a good way of doing that. Um, I can't wait to get it out. Honestly, I can't wait <clears throat> to get it out. But I'm also, we've gone, we've gone from the conference and suddenly COVID which has been very busy for us up until this point. I was saying to Craig off air before, we've made some fairly quick changes to the company and, and structure and worried a bit about the future. And the long term, I think is fine. Short and medium might not be so much so good. So we've done all of that. I've been busy. Actually, I think this week, today, since the lockdown, starting to go back into normality, starting not to feel so distracted. Uh, and I've started opening that Excel file again. Um, so yeah, but no promises, okay? Nah, well, you're, that's all right. We wouldn't believe you anyway. No, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you could say whatever you want, man. Yeah, I and, should and, be a and politician, shouldn't I? And yeah. you need a pen name just in case they uh, they call that author a wanker. Uh, so, <laughs> just we'll as Baines Jatch. Yeah. <laughs> Who is that masked yeah. man? That'd be like a uh, Clark Kent. Okay, yeah, don't be. Yeah, don't be. Uh, I mean, don't 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 get uh, uh, paralyzed by perfection. James, I mean, uh, there's a, a thing. I think the the, uh, the two sentence approach for each chapter is probably a good way to look at the overview, the macro view. Don't get lost in the trees for the forest. As long as the story kills, still carries it. The twist, the thrill is there. The the action is at the right flow. You'll you'll be okay. You'll be okay. Yeah. I I doubt you've written a crap book. So Dawson started reading it, and which is interesting. But he yeah. didn't admit much uh, over in London. He said, to, he said to me, I think he read the first couple of chapters and he just said, you can write. Very good. And which was yeah. fine. Kind of all I needed to know at that stage was because if, when you, you, know, you guys probably can't remember before you've published a single thing and anyone's read it, you don't know whether you can write. That's right. Or it's absolutely terrible. It might be absolutely terrible. And you spend half your life thinking that. And this is very familiar from, I know you guys. You spend half your life thinking it's, it could be absolutely terrible. Then you leave it for like a week and you go back and you read it and you think, oh, it's not actually too bad. You know, you're just on this constant thing like that. So uh, he said it, he, he liked the beginning of it and he wanted to read on and he said, you can write. So that's, but I think I, the problem is probably in the middle of the book anyway. But I have to say that I, I didn't wait half my life to publish a book. I, I went through that for about a month and I'm like, ah, screw this. I'm putting it out there. Yeah, because I have no yeah, shame. No shame. We, we cover. You know You're a marine. Him. You go get him. Get over the top. <laughs> Do it. Never look back. I like yeah, it. Because the, the challenge free. that I see whenever you have even a qualified person, and I do this for myself as well, when people um, that I know really well and, and I've read their book and they ask for my opinion, I go, look, this is one person's opinion. This is one reader's opinion. I don't care how well I sell. Your style might actually match to a different set of customers, this different set of fans, anything I tell you could honestly be screwing you up as well. Yeah. And I don't think there's enough recognition that one voice is not enough. You do need to put it out to the fans and find the fans that like you. Otherwise, you're constantly writing to a different set of beats than who your personality is. Yeah. My opinion. I think, 
I agree with that. And I think, and I did get some beaters six or seven and they were, none of them said, I couldn't read this. They got to the end, which is, I think actually someone did tell me, I think maybe it might've been you Craig or Michael saying, if they get to the end of your book, you almost don't need to know what they, they said in the middle bit because people aren't going to get to the end of the book. So that was good. But I think the problem is it was Nathan who gave me the feedback and it was really good, um, really good detailed stuff. And I think too much of it resonated with my fears about it. So that's the reason that I stopped and thought, yes, I, I need to, uh, to do something. And uh, I'm going to, I need to put a timetable on this, don't I? I need to, um, and I need to, uh, oh, there's the book. Um, I can tell you about an email exchange I had today about that. Um, <laughs> I need to uh, also be stronger with Mark and John and say, I'm taking time off to finish this book because it's not, never going to get finished. And they'll both be supportive. Are they abusing you? Are they, are they, are they, are they abusing I mean, you? only sexually at the moment, but it could, could, it could come with psychological abuse at some point. I'm worried about that bit. But while properly uh, uh, socially distanced, of course. Yes. Well, that's, that's how the British have sex, Craig. Yeah. it's like uh it, it's like demolition man right uh, exactly. uh we, <laughs> ooh, get the little headset on vr uh yeah um so what advice would you give uh, new authors uh, james it's been a while for for michael and, and and me where we've been in that position so you're 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 going through this uh, this thought process about the book what advice would you give other authors but well, I would think to get to the stage I'm at now, the only advice I'd give you is is to write uh, and keep writing. And I think there's a lot of distraction now for authors. In the old days before the indie world, <clears throat> you couldn't go online and read myriads of advice about plots and character and um, marketing and book covers. And I think people can get a bit lost in that, ahead of, get ahead of themselves. Whereas it's not just writing the book. Oh, you've got to get the book written. It's all the writing you do to find how you are writing, to, to improve your writing, to find your voice and get to the stage where you'll find your drafts are starting to be close to the one that's that's launched. And really, you don't want to be distracted by everything else. And um, uh, that was a little bit difficult for me in this world at that stage. But the, when I did Jenny Nash, uh, a big shout out to her. She was massively influential for me. She's, she's a book coach in Los Angeles, appears on our podcast very regularly. And she was the one who who got my head down and gave me just that little bit of encouragement. Um, this is good. That chapter's good. I love this. I want to find out what happens next. As soon as you've got one person saying that to you, that's enough for for that kind of the demons to go away and for you to write. If you're by yourself completely like that and you've got no one saying that, you just need to believe that stuff you're writing is going to be good, it's going to be good, it's going to get there, but only when you write. So that's my main bit of advice for that. For this stage, I mean, I'm I'm not as qualified as you guys to talk about this, and I, um, I'm fine. You've got to find your own way of doing things, I think. There's lots of advice about how to revise your book and how to uh, do this, that, and the other, and actually you've got to find what works for you. Um, and ignore people who say you've got to do it this way. Yeah, uh, you've got to sit down at five o'clock in the morning and write for three hours. Otherwise, you're never going to get you. know, that's not going to work for some people. Uh, I work late at night um, and stuff, so I find the way that works for me. Um, yeah, and, and, and when you have friends like us, you're, you're guaranteed to be heckled uh, mercilessly yeah. until you get it out. So uh, find people. Uh, find people who psychologically bully you. To, uh, <laughs> the Americans have no problem with that. That's your problem. Come on, yeah. come on, man. This is pathetic, man. You're you're killing me. You guys used to rule the world. Now look at you. You suck. Now look at you. <laughs> um, you're you're no, just another you... Alfred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's only one Alfred. Um, you raised Mr. Patterson's book into frame just then, I think. Oh, Michael. Yes. Well, we call him Peterson over here. Peterson. That's I... it. Peterson. Peterson. So this book is the book that we auctioned at the end of the um, of the conference, and uh, I believe Mrs. Andalay actually Judith bought the book. Yeah, for, yeah, she beat. For, yeah, we signed it as me and Mark and John uh, signed it, and Judith bought it for five hundred pounds UK pounds, which are worth a lot more than UK dollars. Well, they used to be worth a lot more than UK dollars, worth about twenty one cents in the pound more at the moment, um, and. Uh, 
in US dollars. And the person who came second in the auction, Imogen Clark, who's a UK writer based in Yorkshire, she uh, said, look, have my 400 pounds as well. And then we matched the winning bid, your 500 pounds. So I basically wrote a check for 1500 pounds, which is $1,700, $1, to the Brain uh, Tumor Charity. Uh, Stuart Grant, who's one of our VAs, does a little work in the background, was diagnosed with a brain tumor last year. He's just been through chemo. It's not got rid of the tumor the tumor is never going to go unfortunately for him but he's on this regime uh, of treatment and it's been suppressed which is fantastic for him um and he talks a lot very openly about this it's really interesting uh listening to him but he's he's in a position now where the life the life expectancy for someone with his condition is is 15 years or so but his consultant has said i will be amazed if i'm not on the phone to you in the next few years saying here's something that's just just arrived that we're going to be doing. So he's in that kind of waiting period. But he's an amazing individual in terms of how he's dealing with this. And and so it was a natural choice for us to give the money to them. So I actually emailed them. Um, no, they emailed me. They saw the donation, which I just did online. And I got a really nice email from them saying, hey, this is amazing. Tell us about this conference. And, and then the email back this morning after I told them what it was and, and put them in touch with Stuart was that this book is really interesting. So tell me why you chose this book to auction. Oh, no. <laughs> and at this point I thought, you know, when you, when you actually tell the story, it doesn't reflect brilliantly on us. <laughs> um, so I've just said, it's a long story and uh, it's a bit of a cult thing within the indie world. So I might just leave it at that. But um, yeah, the long story is that this, the author wrote a very rude email to Mark um basically calling him a complete hack and being that that very snobbish thing about genre fiction where oh my god i can't believe anybody reads this tawdry nonsense that you write is pathetic look at my writing and he actually said look at my writing and he included a couple of lines and his writing was the most incredible unreadable gobbledygook using every adjective you've never heard of um and the whole book is like that uh, it's an extraordinary book but take making so we have a phrase over here. I don't know if you have it over there in England that says, you know, if you if life gives you lemons, make lemonade. And so what's been happened is now this book and this whole story. So you guys wrote it and signed it. We we bought it for good. Now we're gonna have Judith, myself, and Craig sign it, and we're gonna do the same thing at 20 bucks. This one book is going to help a lot of people. Um, just and we're hoping that it goes around and around. Whoever buys it, you know, might do another situation. Or eventually, it's going to have a lot of authors who've signed it yeah. over the years. And <clears> there you go. It's going to be amazing. Now, do you have a charity in mind for your auction, or are you going to stick with the brain tumor? Um, you know what? I'm good with sticking with the brain tumor and just you know le letting it ride as, I, as long I, as we can. I am way good with that. One of my uh, wife's peers from uh, the university has uh, been going through it, and uh, it. it it also was not completely successful, but they're still moving forward. So uh, it, it is uh, near and dear. I think we're going to see more of that because of cell phone usage and irradiating our brains constantly and doing things that uh, the modern world uh, does to you. So, uh, yeah. uh, yes, I, I'm perfectly good with that. I always like veterans uh, charities, but those uh, we can do something separate for those. I, I know Michael has uh, uh, sponsored a, a few Kindle campaigns sending kindles to uh, to troops mm, that's excellent yeah. um yeah no that's good well i'll tell the charity that they're going to have uh, and we're going to have another auction in the autumn um one of the things that I, I thought resonated with me when stuart told me that charity he said it's it's quite underfunded it's quite a small niche area um it's not like some of the big cancer charities and so uh, we can potentially make quite quite a difference with them um and, he, and and there's a direct correlation here this is not somebody who who's had you know uh, testicular cancer or breast cancer or whatever and has uh, survived it this is somebody who needs a cure who's living with it who needs that research to take place yeah. and so um yeah that'd be a great thing for us to do i see i'm getting a bit of advice on how to finish my book coming in one of them is to watch michael's just hit publish speech <laughs> that was <from laughs> hit the just hit publish black. just publish <laughs> I tried that. We, you and I talked. You interviewed me a year and a half or two years ago or something, and that was. It's like, come on, man, just, just freaking do it. And but you know, you're in a very unique position where you're at when the fact that you're at the front of a major indie supportive community, and everybody's rapidly going to be paying attention to what you're doing. Which is, I'm like, I would pin name and just tell people I pin named it. It's doing fantastic. Imagine, yeah. you know, yeah. who it is. I'm Bain, Payne's Jatterson. <laughs> 
Yeah. Robert Galbraith. That's you. <laughs> yeah, Robin Galbraith. <laughs> yeah, that's, oh, that guy. Yeah. He's not getting away with that. <laughs> yeah. I.K. Rowling. Yeah. <laughs> I know Rowling. <laughs> C.H. Tingle. Oh, no, that's something completely different. Um, <laughs> so, so here we are. Michael, what is, uh, what is your way forward? What do you see three months from now? What do you see the uh, indie publishing business looking like uh, midsummer? July is usually a low month for, for sales, I believe. Oh, it, it murdered me the last two years. I got just killed in July. Well, a couple of different things happen. In summertime and in Christmas time, you normally see Trad Pub kill it. And they um, they do a lot of advertising and everything else. And what we're seeing right now is we're seeing uh, a lot of um, people, indies probably, stopping their their marketing. They're just dropping. In fact, that negatively affected our advertising spin because all of a sudden our advertising spin shot way up. And we're like, wait a minute, what's going on here? And what we realized is our cost per click bids were in the middle of the pack. And a lot of the people who are at the at the top, <laughs> they dropped their spin and guess who's at the top now? And all of a sudden Amazon's like, oh, you wanna spend that much? Not a problem, here you go. And I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> And so, you know, for the rumor is that, you know, a lot of people are seeing 20% drop on, on, you know, month over month or whatever, and we're not seeing it. I'm like, well, that's probably why. At least an extra 10% of our income is now going to advertising spend. <laughs> so you asked me about three months from now. I believe that um, for the most part, if you, if you believe 60% of what's coming out of China, which I do, um, uh, I, I am probably more pro or sympathetic to China than a lot of people. Um, I've been there a few times. I've seen what's on TV versus what's in reality. I do believe that we will roll through this uh, situation. Just, you know, it's almost like corner of the world by corner of the world. Like we're not going to go to, to London and that as quick as maybe we come back over here to Vegas, something like that. But it's, it's not going to be separated by a lot of weeks, but there are going to be a lot of people who are, you know, you're supposed to advertise through the hard parts if you can. Yeah. And we are. And so I believe LMVPN is going to come out of it just as strong as we do when we go through Christmas. Now, what happened this most recent Christmas, two years ago, Trad Pub was, was advertising really hard starting at the very end of October. We had two months of massive spend for fewer clicks in 2018. So we expected that. And a lot of people I noticed in 20 books were listening to others going, we just cut off all of our spend. We don't, we don't spend anything until January anymore. And what happened is Trad Pub wasn't spending like they used to. And all of a sudden our December shot up because we advertised into a very weak forward wind where we are, everyone was expecting a really strong forward wind. And so um, December, January, best months ever, February, solid month, March, it's going to be a very good month, but it's not as good as it was going to be. And so we see our future. We're running, you know, full steam ahead. We try to help as we can. We're trying not to point out COVID as much. We believe that's been accomplished. So instead of um, anything related to COVID, we're doing a 30 day spring fest where we have free books for spring going through. And, you know, we're focusing a little bit more trying to bring positivity, color into what we're trying to accomplish. So, and that's a, that a good, a good April will set up June and then hopefully we'll be through the worst of it and keep, keep rolling. And that's a, that, that's what I'm seeing as well. Uh, March is going to be just fine for me. I had a lot of promotions. I had uh, four, four releases, two complete uh, omnibus editions and two new releases. So uh, <clears throat> it has been actually just fine for me. And I see the same thing for April. Even I'm willing to up my ad spend. I have spent a, a fair bit in in March, and I'll up my ad spend for April as well, trying to hit those uh, markets and get those omnibus editions. Uh, they, they those should sell to everybody because uh, one is uh, 3,700 pages, KU pages. I know you only get paid for 3,000. Another one is 3,000 pages. Another one is 2,200 pages. So getting those out there and and, and making those viable to the whole market, that is that is where I'm going to put the majority of my effort as well as continuing promotions on the first in a series, two or three a month, 
uh, through this, uh, through the duration. And actually, I'll probably just keep it going because I've, it's been working fairly well for the last few months. So that's, a, that's my plan moving forward is more of the same, but I'm going to hit the ads. Like I said, I'm going to hit a, a start up a German ad today in English to hit the uh, English reading market of Germany with those box sets. Uh, the Terry Henry Walton being one, and then uh, my free trader being one one of the other ones, as well as the UK. Fire those up. It's not like uh, uh, the old Survivors, the original one, a series set in the UK, the three seasons. That one was uh, was okay, but they had uh, they were doing stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So also just realize that sometimes it's it you have to get past what's happening around you, whether there's a, a, a situation going on like we have right now or not. If you want to continue on this path, put your head down, get that those thoughts out of your brain, you know, make yourself do it. And sometimes it's just sitting down and starting. And the next thing you know, you've got another few thousand words into your book. You were able to get past the worry and anxiety. And because that worry and anxiety is not in your head, yeah. you worry and anxiety, uh, have anxiety or less anxious. I think that's a really good point, actually, if you were wondering how, how to deal with uh, the anxiety which creeps up on you and actually doing stuff that doesn't feel like you've got the capacity, spare capacity to do is the answer because it distracts you, you know, once you get lost in your writing and uh, it's a refreshing change uh, uh, from reality. So I've seen, I mean, one thing I haven't talked about is that Mark and I started our own little publishing company, which I mentioned to you, you guys, and um, uh, we've got just one series at the moment of six books. And I'm kind of using it to set up the accoutrement of running a, a small indie publisher company and we have uh, I have not taken foot off the gas with advertising but we have definitely seen a little drop off of page reads not so much of sales although it's not a big it's more of a, a KU um, series what's um, your split KU to, uh, KU to sales something like 70 30 65 to, to 70 uh, of KU in terms of income uh, which of course makes advertising tricky to, to know exactly how effective the advertising's been you can sort of guess it but uh, yeah. about this uh, as this all started we had a big day uh biggish day for them uh on march the 15th but it's definitely uh trailed it's gone a lot a little bit um since but if i look at the second half of the month the first half of the month it's been there's been a drop so you you say you've been insulated for that michael because um I, Amazon advertising sort of took up the slack on your um your advertising <laughs> campaigns without yeah. you noticing. About you, Craig, have you seen anything? Any? Oh no, I noticed. Why is this credit card bill pinging me? Yeah, again? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, have I noticed what the increase in spend? No a drop off in um, in page reads or. I have not. Only because I had a new release and I had a huge, huge swath of promos. Uh, the first truly full hard release that I've done. I had at least 20, 25 promos set up. I had uh, the launch with the, the long pre-order, the longest pre-order I've ever done. So it's it's up just a little when I figure it should be up much more than that. So I think that is, is an artificial measure for me. I am getting good page reads consistently. And uh, once again, I had a book bub on a, uh, on a book at the beginning of, of March. I have another book, Bob, on a, on a book at the beginning of, of uh, April. So those, those are insulating me from this when I think I should be making more because I invested a lot into these promotions, but I'm, I'm definitely not making less. Okay. And, and somebody asked about BookBub. I have zero influence with BookBub and who they pick, uh, and they have been picking uh, a, a mix of traditionally published long-term authors. So you see those probably two-thirds of a month are, are more established and older titles. But for more established people, I think that uh, BookBub is trying to uh, use that to relate to their audience as well as continue building the audience. Hey, get a deal on an Ursula K. Le Guin or a Neil, Neil Gaiman or a, a James Patterson title. Or uh, I saw Mark uh, had a BookBub uh, last week on one of his Milton titles. And that's always, you know, always a nice benefit. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know on the inside of BookBub, but it looks to me like they've done some pretty good deals with the trad companies to go through the back catalog, basically open up the shelves of stuff going back 20 years. And uh, and I imagine that's good business for them. Um, and, you know, you, I, I, when I see people saying, well, can you ask them not to do that? I think this is a market. It's a business. You, what you should be asking yourself is how can I make my book as attractive, more attractive? How can I find my edge in that? Not ask for some sort of unfair competition of somebody else to stop 
uh, doing yeah. something for you. But I mean, we're and that's where one thing that I'd like to kind of mention. I don't. I'm not on social media very much, so I don't get involved in a bunch of the discussions that are on there. So if there's something going around where the sky is falling, guess what? It's not affecting me. And so I would, uh, and I would encourage everyone to realize: don't get lost in that, because as much as it's the people, the brain is wired to worry, and you yeah. know that's how it keeps itself safe. But if you look at it and go, okay, I'm going to come out of this, and here are some people who are doing well. Let's let's emulate them. Let's realize that there's an opportunity here. The sky does not have to fall. It's not falling at the moment. And we're doing stuff in case it does. I mean, I went from not paying much attention to what was going on today, day to day on the sales to looking at it every few hours and then looking at it every hour. I was really writing and making sure because my responsibility is to everybody in the company to make sure that if I'm seeing something abnormal, what are we doing to do about it? Yeah. Otherwise, that's what I need to do, not sit on on the social and get caught up in what is this? What is that? It's like, no. Are you writing? Are you advertising? Are you running your business? Are you making sure your family is safe? Are you making, you know, let's yeah. focus on those and then let's make us come out better, stronger, faster because our competition is even in a worse strait at the moment. Yeah. Look after your little bit. Look after the bit that you can do and do that as best you can. And um, I think we need to remember that that there are a lot of unknowns and there is scope obviously to be very concerned and anxious about the future. And one of the things we don't know at the moment is how bad it's going to get. Um, the figures right. last two days have been pretty good in the UK, but they could easily just be statistical anomalies in the long term. Um, we don't want to hope. It looks like we may be diverging from the Italy, Spain path more akin to where France is which will be manageable. I, I say that obviously it's a trite thing to say when, you know, people are going to die. Uh, the U S I don't know, you know, it's, uh, it's a big country. And, and uh, one thing you've got is people are quite spread out through lots of the middle part of it, but in, in the cities where we're seeing the worst breakouts, you have some of the biggest metropolises in the world. So there's unknowns there of how bad it's going to get, how long it's going to go on. And then the other unknown is the long-term impact on the economies which could be people talking about all the way from a depression, which is a very serious thing through a very bad recession or something we recover from. We don't know exactly. But one thing I would say is books are cheap units. You know, we're not selling Ferraris. You're not in that part of the market where you think head in hands. If we go into a big recession, we're finished. Actually, even in a recession, people buy books and read books and they're, they're 199 escapism stuff. So we're well placed in the long term but you won't be able to take advantage of that if you lose your head now. Uh, yeah. Don't keep your head down yeah. and focus on looking after your business and make sure you survive this short term. Do you have a backlist? Excellent. You have opportunities to reduce the prices, you know, and if you don't have a backlist, well, you know, there are other options, other strategies, other tactics you can do. Be proactive and start figuring it out now. Sure. I saw the, the comment from Mark uh, about me not losing. I've not, I've not lost any sales on the last flight. It's exactly even. You are and a godlike entity. I think I put that down to the consistency that I bring the, um, the whole marketing and sales issue on that. <laughs> I thought that was a great. I'm glad you guys brought that up because I thought that was hilarious. Good what deal. Mark good said. deal. The, uh, when does uh, SPF 101 close? Yeah, so we're going to stick it on for another week uh, and close it next Wednesday. Um, yeah. So one thing we did was we we put up a two year uh, payment plan, which I have to say anybody in this space is don't do that. Don't do a two year payment plan for various reasons. But uh, it just makes it affordable and accessible to as many people as possible at the moment. Um, and uh, we've always done we've always had this no quibble 30 days so you can pay 29 dollars get the whole course have a look at everything and then say it's not for me that's fine as well um so we're doing what we can we've also made our spfu which is our series of webinars uh, available to everybody which used to be behind a sort of a semi paywall we had to basically be a course member to get through to that so we've done a few things to try and uh, do what we can for now uh, yeah so 101 can i give the url selfpublishingformula.com forward slash 101 we'll close it up next wednesday evening i like okay, that can, and then, can i give the url blah 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 no yes yeah no. Actually, I, can't give, I can't give i can't give the url selfpublishingformula.com forward slash 101 <laughs> yeah don't don't put the, the slash 101 out there um the uh uh and uh ads for authors are you looking at when that's uh yeah, so the plan at the moment is June, and we do run a 
rotation in the company for this. Our, 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 we're geared up around these launches and there's quite a lot of work involved in it. And we are quite happy to keep it there just because we don't have the capacity to suddenly change things. But having said that, it's not inconceivable that if we get lots of people saying, look, I'm going to have the next, I know I've got the next four weeks at home. Um, can I make the most of it? It's not inconceivable that we'll bring it forward. So we'll, we'll, we're monitoring that. How big is your company? Because you only hear, you see Mark, you see James, you see, you hear about young Tom. Young Tom, and, yeah. And John. And yes. John. So Mark, John, and I own the company. And mm -hmm. Lucy is a director and works with us. Uh, we have uh, young Tom, who's basically a salaried employee. We have Catherine Matthews, who you would have seen at the conference, uh, is a virtual assistant, but lives here in the UK, quite very close to me, actually, and is hands on every day of the week. Don't we stop have, her, no hands on. No hands no, on. She's not hands on, no. She's uh, at a safe distance. <laughs> All right, good, good. Um, yeah. Uh, and then we have uh, VAs who do to lesser or more. So Stuart Grant is another mm -hmm. one uh, who I mentioned earlier. Um, Alexandra Amor, who's in Canada and does some work for us. Uh, we have Tina Gallagher, does some Facebook moderation. That's 10. Uh, so that's, that's one ten. digit of 10. Uh, who else? God, I hate doing this because I might miss somebody out. And then from time to time, people do like Sarah Rosette has just done uh, the Ingram Spark sessions in the 101 course for us as a bespoke thing. Cecilia Mecca has done uh, well, course work for us before. She'll do some stuff. Um, and there are others. Garrett Robinson. So it's, it's fairly large. I mean, I don't think that, you know, I never thought about it all that much until I saw the production in London. I'm like, wait a minute, how many of these individuals are just helping this and how many of these individuals are actually all part of behind the scenes in SPF yeah. all the time? I suppose we only really have two, two employees in that sense, in that Tom and Catherine are kind of, you know, they get a decent paycheck every month and work for us every day. And, and no, but I count all of the other people you guys are helping. Yeah. You know, everybody that comes in that that is either been a collaborator or something that's helped grown the company or that reaches out and, and you guys are a client of theirs, you're helping. You know, and that's one of the encouragements I had a few weeks ago and up on stage was how many people do indie authors, publishers help every single day and we're still doing it. Yeah. You know, yeah. how many families need that extra few hundred dollars that that cover brought in? <clears throat> and the answer is quite a few. And so as we keep our businesses strong, we're able to continue helping people around the world, not only from the standpoint of income, but from the standpoint of getting their mind out of a negative situation. Or, you know, we all have probably had those. I was in the hospital. I was reading your book. I was doing this. I was reading your book, you know, your story. So by doing what we do every single day with the God given talents that we have, we are helping humanity. Let's not forget that. Yeah, no, I yeah. think you're absolutely right. And, and one of the things we did at the beginning of this, when, when it first happened that first week when things went a bit crazy after the conference, is we said we said to Catherine and Tom and Stuart and John Stone, who I forgot John Stone was the video editing, we said to them, we're going to pay you throughout, regardless of even if we don't need to use you because we've had to scale things down, you're being paid. Don't worry about that. So we didn't want them to worry about that. And I was aware that one of the reasons we could do that is because of our long term, we know is good because we're in the right sector, the right market to survive this and thrive in the future. There are other industries where they're unable to say that to their employees. And I yeah. understand that. And I know there's some anger going around, some upset about the way some companies are treating their employees. But I also, on the other hand, running a business, see, you have to work within the bounds of reality. Um, but we are in a great industry. Uh, for that. Elaine Bateman is uh, telling me I should also mention the army of wonderful volunteers who help in SBF. Mm -hmm. And we saw them at the conference in their yellow t-shirts. Right. We can... Did you intend to make them look like minions? I mean, yeah. was that a thing? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think actually minions is better than the Oompa Loompas, which uh, somebody <laughs> did. I think Dawson himself used that expression. Okay. I, I wouldn't have done that. but uh... I, I would have blamed Elaine Bateman for Oompa Loompas. But if you say it was Dawson, then we'll go with Dawson. Yeah, no, I think he said it. <laughs> but his voice is his accent. It's, it's, a, it's a bunch of oompa loompas. You know? It's and, so much and, more genteel. And was something that, that? we do as, as, as authors is uh, I know I'm paying my folks ahead of time for uh, editing for uh, for the covers. I, they've come through. I mean, I've got a lot of books published. All, all, my, all my cover artists have come through. All my editors have uh, always come through. And uh, I have no problem helping them over uh, over an edge. 
I do need to hire a new VA. I made the pitch yesterday uh, for uh, running these two day conferences and running. <clears throat> it just, you got to herd the cats, the authors. I'll take care of getting a hotel and, and, uh, and then the, uh, the VA will then herd the cats, make sure people get where they need to go, where they need, uh, when they need to be there, and that we uh, uh, set up some catering to make sure that too. And that's that's what I need a person for. They'll get uh, they'll get some pay, and we can hey, start. Where, where were you? Was that in El Fernayo that that I pitched, or was that in Americana, right next door in the New York, New York? Because this that breakfast you and I started talking about that, wasn't it? That was at the uh, the American buffet. Yeah. Okay. No buffet. It's actually a cafe. Yeah, it's a it's a yeah sit down uh, um, American style in right next to El Fornicato. It, it's El Fornio. Fornio. It's, a, Sorry, it's, a, not... it's that that whole restaurant actually exists in Europe, Craig. It, it's actually you know it's over here. Fornicato in the. Uh, no, it's the, it's the Italian. It's a. It's, it might be in Italy. Um, so this is these are your your smaller gatherings. Uh, I, I'm your... looking at I'm looking at like ten people or so, yeah. in a small environment, a single conference room. And uh, two days uh, trapped with me uh, to discuss, and this is people of a comparable uh, where they are comparably in their in their journey. So some people with like one book, a number of different genres, not all the same genre, to because we learn from each other. We learn what is Thriller doing that helps them move this. What about uh, what about these also bots? How do we get those? And uh, those cross genre boundaries, and and we'll talk for two days. And Michael said he's shaking his head over there, but uh, uh, he said you have more value than you realize, and and uh, it's I hope that we can bring something that Michael has brought to tens of thousands of people, and that's changing lives through the twenty books premise, and just being a positive force within the entire community. And uh, it, I've, uh, I've, I've picked up that torch as well, and we're carrying it forward. And uh, we've learned an awful, awful lot over the years uh, through engagement. And everything's caveated. Probably what worked for me doesn't necessarily isn't necessarily going to work for you. But talking through it may help somebody, even though my situation doesn't help you. I mean, if you write one book a year or, or one book a uh, 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 week, one book. <laughs> Were you going to say millennia? Uh, I, was, I, I didn't have the right word I, I, as an author. Well, it started I was, I was in, in one decade. It's going to release in a different decade. <laughs> it we don't know in, which decade yet. We will start in 2010. You're right. So, so oh. the, que the question of uh, do you write in a series really doesn't apply uh, in some cases. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, he's going to cut us off right now. It's going to be just me and Michael. He's like, yeah, wankers, fucking colonists. God damn. Yeah, <laughs> you, 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 Alfred, you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, that is also the best. The Concord is the best plane ever. You know, I watched a special one. And that's, the, by the way, the plane that's sitting behind you. We can't see the, 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 the nose cone of it. Except, right. except, I have to tell you, it's not a Concorde. It's not a Concorde. What is it? This says this was a 1951 UK military aircraft called the Vulcan, which uh, you can see. Obviously, the UK yep. was involved in the design of the Concorde. You can see the same guys were old men in 1960s developing uh -huh. the Concorde had come off this project. It's called the Vulcan. It was a Cold War bomber. Had a standoff missile that would drop. You know, big, big blue steel missile, would, a nuclear warhead would drop about 200 miles away from its target, and then the aircraft would turn for home. And we had this was our, you know, your Titan missiles, your sort of that was your response. This was ours. It was okay. the Vulcan, ready to go. Oh, they were fuel and fuel. Yeah, it's an amazing aircraft, actually. Amazing. <laughs> and yeah, you never, yeah. never forget seeing one in real life it, when they put it was still flying until <laughs> a few years ago when they put all four engines on and pull up from the ground. It's like, Everything's shaking inside you. It's an incredible oh. aircraft. And it's the hero of the last flight. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that's well, I, I remember vaguely you and Mark talking about one of your favorite airplanes and stuff, and that was it. But from the back, it really made me think of the, the Concorde. Yeah, it's the Delta Wing. And um, here's a very small little anecdote, is that uh, the Delta Wing was a, it's this British, it wasn't a British invention because it, people understood how the Delta worked slightly differently from the thin-winged, uh aircraft of the day but they developed this and everyone was interested in it and my dad in his logbooks which are on the shelf over there he was an rf test pilot in the 60s and he flew with a guy called harry andonian who was a 
quite a famous American test pilot. Not then, he was in his you know, late 20s, the same as my dad. And Harry Andonian came over with a B-47 from uh, Edwards and flew with my dad. My dad flew it. And I contacted Harry Andoni, who's still alive, still around, when I put a book together for my dad and I said, um, you know, can you just write a little note for dad? And he was really complimentary. Said, yeah, I remember your dad was a great pilot and we flew together and stuff, which was really nice of him. And he said they were all really interested in the in this this um, aircraft, this type of uh, wing, which makes me think that my dad and Har Harry Andoni just missed out being an astronaut. He could have easily, he was right in that crop. Uh, one of his colleagues was Neil Armstrong. And in the brilliant film about Neil Armstrong recently, which was called First Man, it was called First Man, there's a moment in that film when, when Neil Armstrong gets put onto his path to become the first man on the moon. And it's he, he loses his daughter. He's a little bit out of sorts. He's about to go on to do some work as a test pilot when they basically say to him, we want you to stay in the office for a bit. And that's when he applies to NASA. And what was he about to do? And this is based on reality. The guy it says it in the film. He says, you know, you're going over to have a look at the Delta Wing in, in, in England. We're going to send someone else. So we want you to, to stay in the office. Now, he was peed off about that, applied to NASA. The rest is history. Harry Andonian went to the UK to look at the Delta Wing. And, oh. and that was amazing when I looked into the background of that. So it was going to be Neil Armstrong. Huh. Uh, instead, he thought, well, I'm not going to hang around here anymore because um, they, they've lost faith in me. They think because I've lost my daughter, I'm not concentrating anymore. And he went on to NASA and walked on the moon. And uh, yeah, little anecdote. Oh, no, that's really cool. Yes. There you go. There you go. <clears throat> good to go. We've been on for a little over an hour. So uh, it was always a good conversation. There's a, a lot of opportunities. And uh, right now, I, I think the, the biggest thing that uh, both uh, Michael and James hit on was Stay focused on what you're doing. Uh, don't uh, don't panic. Don't get quagmired in all the other stuff going on. Uh, that's uh, limit your social media time. I know I jump on, but I'm trying to keep uh, keep folks from panicking. And you, you don't actually uh, sleep, Greg. We're, we're all in agreement. You don't sleep. I, I don't. I don't it, well, I, I think the right word is I don't waste time sleeping. So <laughs> <laughs> that's the marine in you. We could be awake right now. Damn right. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I get, I, if I fall asleep watching TV, good. There, then I'm sleeping. But uh, otherwise, no. You work until you. Uh, do you fall if you fall asleep watching TV, do you count that as your sleep then? And once yeah. you wake up from that, you're you're away again for the next day. You bet. Uh, I'm awake for whatever, and then uh, and then go do whatever. I, I, that's the great thing about working from home and, and and being me is I don't I'm not constrained to normal work hours. So if I if I go to sleep at two and get up at four, fine. I'm I, at, at in the afternoon. I stay up until I, I fall asleep again. So uh, you'll see me on at all different hours and times, and that's because of uh, this random sleep pattern that I sleep when I'm tired. I sleep when I fall asleep. So mm -hmm. I don't waste time laying in bed hoping to fall asleep. That's uh, what a waste of time. We don't we don't like wasting time. See um, we're, but, we're, so we're anyway, that's, a, that's, a, that's all beside the point. Don't be like me. Be like a normal human being. And, uh, and, and do great things. Uh, a lot of things that SPF has done, a lot of things that LMBPN is doing for, for its 80 to 90 people who are counting on LMBPN to continue being successful. Uh, SPF, you got a dozen or more counting on you guys to be successful. I've got a smaller crop of people, like 39,000 and 20 books uh, to 50K, who are, who are counting on good advice, good conversations, uh, success posts, and those kinds of things to keep moving forward. Uh, the Vegas conference is still going. I hope this is over by November. If it isn't, we got a lot bigger problems than uh, not doing a conference. I'll uh, make a final decision in August when I can uh, refund everybody's money, 180 days in PayPal, and then it's a one button refund. <clears throat> so just understand uh, that uh, we'll make a final decision in August and we'll still go refunds through the end of September. It's just they'll be minus the PayPal fee because PayPal will have taken it at that point. So uh, that's that's what we're doing for Vegas. We'll have hand sanitizer. We'll change and update our our, our sanitation kind of policies for for the Vegas show. We Last year, all the years, we've had san a sanitizer at the check-in desk. And so uh, we... I'd like to think we were ahead of the curve with mm. with that, and we had uh, all kinds of jugs on the tables the first year. They weren't used. Uh, we'll try to uh, get that. Hopefully by November we can buy it by the jug again from Costco, and uh, and set it out. <clears throat> uh, but we will have it at 
the check-in table. And we're holding out for the Jack Daniels produced uh, uh, hand sanitizer uh, to, <laughs> to make sure just top of the line, best stuff we can get. Because distilleries are now stepping up and making hand sanitizer. So. Oh, yeah, they are. I think <clears> some of the Armani and uh, some <clears> of the... The, the Jack Daniels brand, yeah. uh, the Guinness brand might be a little thick, so uh, we'll we'll go with, also uh, takes, with Jack. Take half an hour to pour it out. <laughs> it's like, come on, come yeah. on. <laughs> Good things come to those who wait. So, Craig, just on from one conference organizer to another, and we're thinking about next year. You're you're not stuck for a huge deposit on the um, on the place in November. Uh, thank goodness. Uh, Sam's takes good care of me. Uh, so, our our required costs at this point are extremely limited. So uh, we're okay. I've already spent some money on on speaker gifts because as I see things, it's like, hey, there's a good thing that'll be for this this group of authors who are presenting. And uh, and I bought some things, I'll buy the swag. I hate to say it, the swag lead, lead time is gonna push me right up against uh, the, the refund date in August. So, I'll, uh, I'll order right around then because I think it'll probably be a longer lead time because a lot of the swag is made in China, <clears throat> um, like the notebooks and stuff like that. So we may have to adjust what we do because we're buying now big quantities. We're going to buy probably like 1,800 notebooks and 2,000 pens and, and stuff like that. But I expect a lot of orders got canceled, so they might have some blank stock available. So once again, trying to get the best buy and best value for your dollar, we might jump on those deals this summer. If, uh, if some pop up, I'm uh, with a number of promotional groups like uh, for Impro Marcos. And so if they, they put out a deal saying, hey, uh, anybody looking, we're, we're selling swag at half off, uh, I might jump in and then we'll just swell it, uh, sell so it. We we're going to get all these it. notepads in November that say GEC Spring Conference crossed out <laughs> and, uh, and, and hand <laughs> written, Vegas written on or, there. Or, or just a sticker put on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But you're going to get a refund of $8. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll comp you. <clears throat> um, uh, so that's, that's what we're looking at. Uh, we'll keep that going. I don't have this big deposit down. We've, uh, this is the fourth year with Samstown. The first year I paid a deposit. Second year I paid it. Last year I didn't have to pay a deposit. I just paid, uh, incrementally cause I sent them big checks as we went. And this year I was going to send them a big check and try to pay the whole thing off right away. But I'm waiting on that because I doubt I could get that money back if I, or it would yeah. be uh, uh, a lot less. So I'm waiting till the last minute to send that. Probably that'll probably be September for uh, for dropping that money, and then and then we'll see what kind of penalty we have. There's no penalty on the rooms uh, if anybody reserved a room, so we're good there. Uh, and then uh, hopefully we have 2021 and 2022 locked up by that time as well. And you've got a new venue for 21, mm -hmm. Are you, which you haven't announced yet. No, 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 not okay. well because I haven't signed the final contract. Okay. We were supposed to do that next week. I was coming to to Vegas again, but uh, uh, that's obviously out. Yeah. But, uh, well, we next, run next time so, we can. We'll go down there and uh, we'll we'll do the nasty. We're all excited about being on the strip. Um, so we're thinking about twenty one. We definitely want to do it again. Uh, we are still buzzing really from from having held it this year. We haven't uh, sat down with a couple of the sponsors, but we know they are. I can predict they're going to be pretty um, pretty excited about it as well. So we're thinking two days. We really liked the venue. I don't know what you thought, Michael, uh, but we felt the venue. <laughs> I liked worked. it. I loved when I went up one time and, and out. There's a lot of people because they had the little tables. They're all having their conversations out there. That was fantastic. The restaurants were interesting, but the Honest Burger Company, I had one of the best burgers I've ever had in, in the you know England right there at the venue. And then there was another restaurant that was like a little bit across the street. Yeah, their their concept of customer support was a little lacking. Okay, yeah, that's, we do find that still in some European countries. Um, yeah, so we think on our minds at the moment. We've had preliminary conversations with them. In fact, just as all this kicked off, so we sort of paused it there. But um, it's to have that venue, but to have the whole thing. So the whole of that, the whole foyer area would be ours. We could potentially even have a mini independent book fair set up in that foyer area. We'll give a lot more time for mingling and and, and giving people some time to to chat. Uh, really an, you guys had they were selling, so they were selling breakfast, foods, and drinks, and yeah. coffee, and it was an interesting effect. Yeah, well, we did one of the things we did is I talked to Craig very early on, and he sort of said, "Be be wary about getting into catering," <laughs> and we we discovered 
you know, in just trying to find a venue in London, we would talk to people who say, okay, the venue is going to be 12 to 15,000 uh, pounds for the day uh, and another 23,000 pounds for our minimum catering package. And if you want people to have lunch as well, that's going to be another 12,000. And suddenly it was ballooning to sort of 40, 50,000 pounds, ridiculous in London. So we thought we'll, pl we'll hold it in a place where people can walk out and buy a coffee and a sandwich nearby or, or in the venue and let them look after it. And I think we'll do that again. We might do an evening do where we cater, but um, during the day. But there was another theater, which you probably didn't see, which is about 300 um, strong in the same place. So we've got that big theatre with 900 seats, another theatre with 300 seats just next door in, in, in the building um, and that foyer. So we'd like to do that, hold it over two days um, and yeah, potentially expand the evening. I don't know if we'll do the boats again, but we'll have the evening do possibly in place in the venue. I got to tell you, man, that boat was, was packed and if, if we'd actually had everyone, I think we would have sunk. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was packed and there was only about 400 and something on there. We could have had, actually, it was 300 and something on there, we think. Well, we could have, we could have had 620. Level was pretty open because everyone came into one level. That felt yeah. like it was full. And then if you went downstairs, you actually found places you could sit and, and talk and have a good time. But yeah. the, the top was a lot more, the party top area, you know, some people dancing and stuff. It was a neat experience. The party so thank boat. you, Craig, for paying for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll see you next year, Craig. And you're um you're a starring part in our conference highlights video. Have you seen that, Michael? Me? I have not. Yeah. And I've heard to... you guys do it. I'm like, is that me or not me? I don't remember saying that, but it sounds like me. Yeah, <laughs> it is you. And uh, yeah, it's a really really neat video. But some of it's filmed on the boat with me okay. and you talking. So yeah. <laughs> Good deal. Well, thank you both for your time. Really appreciate it. Appreciate you uh, sharing your insights and wisdom and uh, everything that's going on with what you know in the industry. <laughs> He's coughing. Uh, I Isolation. I'm off now before I give everybody a virus. And, uh, <laughs> Be a digital, digital virus. Uh, we'll hey, see I've, you tomorrow. I've really enjoyed it. Always love talking to you guys, always. So, um, yeah, stay safe, everybody. And, uh, yeah, we better sign off. Get a glass yeah. of water. Yes. <laughs>